I'm George Flynn and you're watching In-Depth TV. Today is going to be an interesting conversation we're going to have and I believe you're going to find it very enlightening and you're going to be shocked by some of it. I was going down the hall and I looked on our producer's desk, his name is Chris Richards, and he has on this desk a cup that I gave him and it reminded me of this topic and I wanted to expound on it and expand on it for you. I saw this cup, this cup, you know, it's a Superman cup and it's got, a, he's even got a cape on it. So the cup is right here. It's a decorative cup, of course, and it's uh, for probably adults, kids or whoever, but it got me thinking about superheroes and the superheroes that I can come up with, and there are a few, uh, there are many more. Those, they've come up with the Marvel and the DC comics. The superheroes, you go back to Mighty Mouse. You go, of course, to Superman, Superwoman, Batman, Robin. Uh, you, you can come up with all of these superheroes and it, we can go on and on and on. You know, Aquaman and the Justice League and it's just not endless, but there are a lot of them. And we're talking about superheroes. And what I'd like to ask you is, what kind of superhero are you? And you say, well, I'm not a superhero, I'm just you know, doing my thing, doing my work. I go home and or I retired and I, well, I'd like for you to think differently because you are a superhero. To someone out there, maybe an entire group of people, maybe a few, but to at least one, and I'll bet it's to many more than you think, you are a superhero. You are a Superman or a superwoman. You are that person. And let's think about this. You, you know, we see cameras all over the place. Everybody on their phone's got a camera. Everybody's got a camera. There are police cameras all around and there are cameras all over the place. And you say, there have never been so many cameras. Well, I'd like to tell you, there have always been so many cameras. There have always been so many people that have watched you, not just looking, you know, staring at you, but they've watched you. They've watched how you handle things. They've watched how you act. They've watched so many things about you. And they've modeled themselves after you. They've said, well, so-and-so acts that way. I think I'll act that way. And you know it as well as I do. People don't pay so much attention to what you say than how you act. You know, there's an old saying about, do as I say, not as I do. Well, that's a play on words, but it, people say it, do as I say, not as I do. Most people in life do as you do, regardless of what you say. So people are watching you, people are modeling themselves, people are taking on your characteristics. So what I'm saying is those cameras, those eyes, those impressionable people, and they may be three, four, five years old, they may be 20 or 30 years old, they may be 40 or 50 years old, 60, 70, 80, there's no age limit. There's no gender bias. Women, men, you know, every race, they're watching things that you do. And I, you know, it may be three or four people, it may be three or four hundred, it may be 30,000 people watching what you do. 
They're watching how you live. They're watching what you do with your time. Do you give to others or do you always take, take, take? And this, uh, I'm sorry if it's stepping on your toes, but you need to watch your actions. Not because, you know, when you're driving along, a policeman is behind you. Drive the speed limit. Don't talk on the cell phone. People are watching you. And I'm talking about people mainly in your car, in your truck, in your van. Young people. They're doing, they'll be doing the same things you're doing. You're making a big impression on people you might not even know exist. Now that should be a sobering thought. They're watching your lifestyle. They're watching what you do with your money. Do you spend it only on yourself? Are you lavish? Do you hold on to money? Do you save it? Do you save it for a rainy day? Or do you save it and then spend it all on something frivolous? I don't know what your money style is, but someone else can tell you what your money style is, and they might not have ever looked at your checkbook or your credit card statement, but they can tell. And it may be your kids, maybe your grandkids, Maybe your peers. Could be your mother and father, your brothers and sisters. Could be your social group. So you are being watched. And I don't mean in a paranoid sense. You're being watched and the influence that you can be on other people is so amazing. You can do so much good. You can be, do so much good, especially in your family. Your kids are watching every little thing. They know every little nuance. They know every little emotion. They know every little thing about you. Yes, they do. You say, well, I've never told them this. I've never told them. But they know. I don't know how they know, but they do. That's the reason you need to be so aware. I don't say be careful. I don't say live under a gun, you know, you've got to do this, you've got to do, just be yourself, but understand what you do affects so many other people. You say, well, it may affect one or two other people. Yeah, it may affect one or two, other, but then they may affect hundreds and thousands and millions of other people. So you've got to be very aware of what you're doing. That doesn't mean you have to change everything you're doing, or does it? You decide, you answer. So what do you do with your health? Do you take care of yourself? Do you eat right? Because your kids are probably going to eat and your friends are probably going to eat similar things that you do and the same way you do. You know, do you eat a lot of carbs? a lot of fat, a lot of protein, whatever it is, whatever kind of food that you eat, it's probably gonna be the same kind that they eat. However you exercise, do you take your vitamins? Do you do your thing? Do you go for regular checkups? Do you, what do you do to take care of your health? Do you go running? Do you go jogging? Do you have weights or do you do something to keep yourself healthy, because they're going to follow behind you. You know it and I know it. You may have tried to not admit it, but to them, we're going to talk about your family for a second. To them, you are the superhero. You are definitely the superhero. It may not be Superman. It may be, you know, Batman or it may be one of the other superheroes, but you are their hero. And I'm saying being their hero, act like it. Go ahead, act like it. Act like you're someone's hero because you are. Okay. You've made some mistakes in the past. You've made some flaws. 
you, you've, you've done some things that you're not too proud of. Get over it. Give yourself a break. Stop with the guilt and the shame and the blame. Stop. Start today, start this minute, acting like the superhero that you are. So, you are one, be one. Especially for your kids. You don't have to go in and apologize. You don't have to go in and just start acting like the person that you want to be, that you want them to be. If you want them to be a so-and-so and so-and-so, -and -so, you act like that. They will notice it. You don't have to say a word. You just have to start doing and being and talking like the person that you would like to see your kids to be. What about your status? If you're higher status <clears throat> or if you're lower status, act like you're a respectable person of high moral values. That's it. You know, you can tell a lot about people. And in some job interviews, I've heard, uh, you know, people on a job interview, they'll take the, the, you know, the prospect, person that is applying for the job, they'll take them to dinner. And it's not what they eat. It's not anything about the conversation that goes on during that lunch or dinner or even breakfast. It's how they treat the people around them. How they treat the wait staff, how they treat the cooks, how they treat the cashier. You can tell a lot about people, about how they treat others. Now I want you to be the person, you to be that superhero, that person of quality that others can look up to and say, man, I want to be like that when I grow up. And I'm talking about, I've heard people say that when they were 60 or 70 years old. I want to be like that when I grow up. And growing up doesn't mean growing old. Growing up means growing up mentally. How secure are you? How secure are you in who you are? Because if you're secure in who you are, and you know other people are looking to you as an example, it becomes easy. Don't fake it. Decide that you're really going to be that kind of person. Don't do one thing here and one thing there out in public and then something else when you're not in public. Be the same person all the time. Be that person of quality. Be that person of honesty. Be that person of integrity. Be the person that you want your kids to be. Be the person you want everyone else in life to be. You know, the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Well, I'm saying the golden rule when you're a superhero is do unto others better, better than you would have them do unto you. And if you'll take that philosophy, and if you'll take that awareness that someone is watching you and being developed by you, it's an awesome responsibility and it's an awesome motivator for you to be the better person. I'm George Flynn. You've been watching In-Depth TV. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.